The number one thing that people get wrong about affirmations when they're trying to use their words to manifest what they want in their lives is that they actually believe that it's about the words they're saying and that that is going to reprogram their subconscious mind. Now, the law of vibration is more about understanding that the vibration we are embodying, the way we are being, is what is contributing to what we are perceiving in our reality. Now, what a lot of times people believe is they think, well, if I'm thinking, I am rich, I am rich, I am rich, I am wealthy, I am wealthy, I am wealthy, I am, you know, whatever the thing is, I'm attractive, I'm this, that then that's going to reprogram their subconscious mind, they're going to believe it, and it's going to be their reality. Now, the thing with this is that when it comes to words, when it comes to what we are telling ourselves with the words that we say, is that words mean different things to different people because words have no built-in meaning other than the meaning we give it. To some person, you may say, I am rich, and that may mean something completely different to somebody else. And the thing that normally happens is people get stuck trying to manifest things in their life by focusing on surface level things. And that's why the law of vibration more so takes in the whole entire part of the equation. The law of vibration has more to do with how you think, how you feel, and how you act. It's these three things that go into your vibration. Now, when people focus on the words or they focus on affirmations, it's all on thinking. It's I'm going to think better thoughts. I'm going to think I am enough. When in actuality, this isn't about words, surface level things. This is about getting to the deeper aspects of who you are and how you're showing up in the world. This is really what makes a difference. This is a, a good case of this is somebody that's in my uh, Magnetic Mastery membership. I brought him on. I was doing live coaching uh, two days ago. And I bring on this gentleman and I'm talking to him and he's like, well, here's the thing. I'm thinking about what I want. I start to make a little bit of change in my life and I start to feel motivated. But then what happens is I fall back into the old pattern. And I feel like the more I try, the harder it is. And I feel like it's, uh, it's, it's, like, it's just not happening. So I go through waves is what he said. Now, what I asked him is a couple different questions because I could tell that on one hand, his goal is to shift his identity. And part of your identity is also connected to your vibration because you experience in reality a reflection of who you believe you are. And you will only, one of the strongest human desires there is, is to remain consistent to the way that you define yourself. So if you define yourself as a shy person, as a person that only speaks when asked of them but doesn't actually really express themselves, if you identify yourself as somebody that plays small, doesn't really you know, put yourself out there, or somebody that doesn't go over to talk to the person that you're attracted to, if you identify as that person, then there's this desire, there's this drive within you to stay consistent to that because to step out of the unknown, step into the unknown is scary. There's a fear there. And when I was talking to the, my, this, um, this gentleman, his name was Pascal, or Pascal, Pascal. <laughs> um, one of the things that I asked him, as I, was, I, was, I, I asked him to tap into your body. Close your eyes, tap into your body. And ask yourself this question, what is the thing that is holding you back from just being that version of you? Because he kept saying, there's something that's blocking me. And I don't know what it is. And then what he did is he, he tapped into himself and he said, you know what? I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid of failure. And then he's wondering why he's not feeling motivated and why his motivation comes and goes. Well, on one hand, he's motivated to become this artist version of himself. But on the other hand, he's afraid of failure. He's afraid of what will other people think of me or what will happen if I fail at it. Now, here's the funny thing about failure. This is one of the common blocks that a lot of people have when it comes to intending to create their dream reality. As you try to do it, but you're afraid of some type of failure. The thing with failure is it's only actually failure if you deem it as failure. It's a self-judgment. It's a self 
succession of that energy. Now, let me give you an example. I used this example when I was talking about, you know, I have, a, I have a friend of mine who also does the same thing as me. And basically, sometimes what we do is we do these launches. You know, we'll launch something. I'll launch my 21-day challenges. He'll launch something. And one thing that was interesting is I remember talking to my friend once when he would, like, start his launch and he would, like, you know, send it out to his email list. And he would get all sometimes in his head about it and be like, I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, what if it's going to fail? What if it's not working? It's not converting. And I, I used to always, like, look at that and I'd be like, well, it's the, the way you're thinking about it is as if this is like some static thing. There's like some attachment to the outcome. It's like, I tried, it didn't work. The way that I look at anything I do is I try something. If it doesn't work, I pivot and I learn. So one powerful thing to remember is that there is no failure. There is only feedback. There is no failure. There's only feedback. Because feedback is showing you something that maybe isn't working, but maybe there's a way to pivot to make it actually work. When I first got on YouTube, I started making videos and I tried making different topics I would talk about. I wasn't just talking about the law. Of, I didn't even talk about the law of attraction until like a month or two in. I was talking about personal development, habits, a whole bunch of other things. And I kept trying different things and then I found something that worked, something that I was passionate about, something that I wanted to share more of that was very natural for me. But the, the game changer for Pascal was that he realized there was an attachment to the outcome and that he was seeing the failure as some form of static thing. And the funny thing about this is that when I, I even asked him, I said, well, what, how would you know that you failed? And it's important to become aware and ask yourself these questions because a lot of times we set these standards so high because we put pressure on ourselves that's so high that it keeps us from taking action because it's a type of ego preservation mechanism that wants to keep us safe. Our ego has these tricky ways of getting us to stay in the familiar energy. Even if that familiar energy is toxic. Even if that familiar energy is working a job you hate. It will paint the picture of it being scary to keep you where you are. And I said, well, what is it? how would you know you failed? And he thought about it and he's like, well, I guess if I were to do this for three months and it didn't work, then I would know I failed. I was like, interesting. Think about all that pressure. Feel not motivated. Well, you have all this pressure to make it happen within three months or it's a failure and you don't want to be a failure. And a lot of times also this trickles back to a deeper level of childhood stuff where as a kid, maybe you didn't feel you were good enough. And if you didn't feel like you were good enough as a kid, you, you made a decision. I will be good enough. I will not mess up. If you were ashamed for messing up growing up, then it's like, I will be perfect. I will set this huge high standard for me to be perfect. And that's what I will attain. And if it's anything less than that, then I just won't take action. But here's the interesting thing. At what point would you know that something you do is good enough? How would you know it's good enough? And the interesting thing is I asked Pascal this. I said, hey, let me ask you this. Do you consider yourself to be somebody that's a perfectionist? And he goes, oh my God. <laughs> He's like, yes, I am. I'm an absolute perfectionist. Because there's a, core, there's, a, there's a core energy there that puts this incredible pressure. It says, I will be good enough once. Extremely high standard. And if you can't hit it, you might as well just not take action. And it's such a high standard that it's like, it's not even realistic to begin with. One of the best things to get over the feel of failure is to actually go out to do something and to fail. That's the way through any, anything you're afraid of. If you go and do it, you will then be less afraid of it afterwards. Like when it comes to me speaking on stage, the more I do it, the more I lean into that fear, the more the fear goes away. If it comes to you talking to somebody that you're attracted to, you might be very afraid of it just because you haven't done it before. You go over to someone, you introduce yourself, you talk to them, and you realize, wait, this wasn't nearly as bad as my mind made it. Lean into the fear. For somebody that's a perfectionist or afraid of failure, do something you might kind of suck at. And let yourself kind of suck at it. And then identify it as feedback, not failure. And then you realize, wait, there's nothing really wrong with this. There's not some big problem because I've done this. So 
One of the, one of the worst words that we repeat to ourselves. Some of this is somebody, something people ask me sometimes. What are the worst affirmations or the worst words that we continuously repeat to ourselves? And one of the most common core beliefs that I notice when it comes to vibration that holds people back is that there's an initial belief there that says there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. I'm broken and there's something wrong with me. This is one of the most common things that I see with people. This is one of the most common beliefs that I had, by the way, for a long time. I, I literally was blocking love from coming into my life. I was blocking me from having new opportunities from coming into my life. Why? Because I literally believed there's something, there was something broken with me. I would attract people that wouldn't choose me, and I would feel like I was trying to prove myself to them. I would, I would try to like... Um, either fix them because then that would make me indispensable and I would have that kind of energy. And what I eventually realized is no matter what I did on the surface, no matter what affirmations I used, it wasn't that I just sat there and said, I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm worthy, I'm worthy, I am worthy. It was more so becoming aware of that shame, the shame, the belief there's something broken or something wrong with me. And I realized one of the game changers for me is I realized that that pattern I picked up when I was a kid, and I think it was because my parents had a lot of stuff going on when I was a kid, so like they were in their own stuff, and there was a, a meaning that I gave when I was a kid that said, there's something wrong with me. Why isn't mom or dad present emotionally? There's something wrong with me. And what I then internalized is that there's something wrong with me. And that initial belief I carried with me everywhere. And then I would feel not validated or approved of from other people. So I would do my best to get my needs met by having other people that like I would, I would try to get it. I'd try to get it through having a YouTube following, <laughs> all these things. And it was to cover up the shame because the thing with shame is we're afraid people are going to see our shame. So we try to hide it. And a lot of times we'll try to hide shame by getting people's validation and approval. And what I had to realize and the game changer for me was I realized that it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. Mom or dad wasn't physically or emotionally present when I was a kid. It wasn't that there was something wrong with me. That was just their stuff they were dealing with. And then what happened is I was able to really shift my energy and I felt more free because I also realized a lot of the patterns I was carrying around were my mom's and my dad's and not my own. They were like things that I, I internalized that weren't mine. It's like we go around as kids picking up rocks and we put these rocks in our pocket and we think they're ours. And then we develop a story with these rocks. We say, oh, this rock my grandma gave me, my dad gave me. I've always had this rock. I feel so comfortable and familiar with this rock. And then we wonder why it's hard for us to walk places and go places. Why don't we feel so free? We literally have rocks that are like taped to our body. And then what happens is you realize they're not your rocks. You can then let them go. And I realized that shame, the belief I was broken, it wasn't my fault and it wasn't mine. So then I was able to like put it down. And I was able to look at these other beliefs. I was able to put them down. And then I started to feel more free. And that changed everything. That's why the law of vibration is so much more powerful than the law of attraction or visualization or affirmations. Why? Because it gets to the core of who are you being? What energy are you feeling? What energy are you embodying? Now, the way the law of vibration is different than affirmations and words is because it gets down to the identity. The law of vibration is how you think, feel, and act. Who do you believe you are? And one of the biggest shortcuts to creating your own reality and manifesting your dream life is to literally embody the vibration and the energy of the you that's already doing, already thinking, feeling, and acting equal to the reality you want. It's literally making a choice that that is who you are and making the choice that that is who you are because it's who you choose to be, not that is who you are because it's going to get you out of your current situation. That's, that's exactly how I've created my dream reality. This is not just philosophy. This is like how things actually work. This is how I created my dream reality back in 2017 
Working that nine to five job, my thoughts, my actions, my feelings were equal to that reality. I made the choice. I am a full-time YouTuber now. I'm being it because it's who I choose to be. I got better every time. I didn't, the, fail of feel, the fear of failure did come up for me. The fear, fear of what other people thought about me and that fear of judgment came up for me. All these, I, I'm not credible enough, came up to me, through to me. The key is to lean into it because the way you get through all this is going through it, not trying to go around it or trying to wait until the right time. So affirmations and words are surface level thinking thing, but when you get down to who are you being, that's what changes everything. And here's the thing, most people don't know who they are being because they've always been what they think everyone else wanted them to be. As a kid, it's like, oh, you need to be this way. You need to be a straight A D1 athlete. You need to do this. You need to be like this way in school. You need to, children are better to be seen and not heard. These are all these beliefs we pick up. And then we believe this is who I am. This is how I'm supposed to embody. This is who I'm supposed to be. And the key is realizing that's conditioning, not you. The patterns that I've shed that have completely transformed my life is I shed the people-pleasing pattern, which was my way of not, not having people see the shame that I felt for my thinking I was, I was broken or something wrong with me. So people-pleasing, nice guy syndrome, I had to shed that. And then I was able to shed uh, the, the, the belief that I'm broken, the belief that uh, I need to fix other people in order to be loved, the belief that people don't choose me. These are all things that I had to become aware of. And the way that I became aware of them is I started observing my own patterns. I started observing what was in my life and the energy that was embodying. And also, even more important than all of this, is your vibration is a combination of your values because your values make up your identity. So when I was living as the nice guy, people pleaser, trying to hide my shame, I valued what other people thought about me over just about anything else. I valued... Um, I valued working a nine to five job and being told what to do more than doing my own thing back in 2016. And then 2017, I decided, I made a choice about who I am and I started to value my own work ethic. I started to value uh, going after my passion. That was the most important thing to me. Even while I had that nine to five job, I was doing both. I started to value uh, my, you know, putting information out on YouTube, which meant I had to say no when certain friends wanted to hang out, if that would get in the way of being and making videos. My values changed. The thing that's changed my life over the last five years, and even before that, that fit, you know, five years ago in my life completely transformed is my values changed. My sense of identity changed. My ability to step in the unknown was something I committed to. That's what changed because remember, our values our virtues we are living by, and many of us may be living by the virtues of people-pleasing, nice guy, nice person, um, wanting validation and approval, might be living by certainty, having the certainty of the familiarity, maybe living by the values of having someone else tell you what to do, may live living by the values of being in a toxic trauma bond, uh, somebody else gaslighting you. Like if we value those things or we tolerate them, then we will experience a reality that is equal to that. But the moment you begin questioning these things and the moment you begin putting your energy more so into, into who you choose to be, that's where your life really begins to change. Your life changes when you energetically shift. And the way you energetically shift is you make a new choice about who you are. It's really simple. It's just that we believe we are the rocks we've been giving. We believe we are what we were in the past. But the truth is, and one of the truths about quantum physics that'll change your life is understanding that every moment is a new moment. Every moment, you are a new you. If you experience the same reality, you say, I'm stuck, then the only thing that's stuck is your definition and the stubbornness to that familiar energy. Because every moment's a new moment. So if you say, I am stuck, then you're saying, I am stuck. Well, now is a new moment. Okay, well, I'm stuck again because I have this attachment to that story and I'm stuck again. And you say, well, I attract emotionally unavailable people. Well, I attract emotionally unavailable people. Okay, now it's a new moment. What energy are you embodying? Oh, I attract emotionally unavailable people because we're stuck on the story. But at any moment, you could change the story by becoming aware of it and realizing it's a story.
It's not built into reality that all people are emotionally unavailable. It's just the filter through which you are seeing reality is reflecting back to you people that are emotionally unavailable because you believe that you deserve emotional unavailability or at some level you might be embodying emotionally unavailable energy. <laughs> that was hard for me to look at back in the day. Back in the day, as if I have it all figured out and I'm the most emotionally available person ever now. But I have come a long way, I will say that. I'm being sarcastic there. Um, I've come a long way in the last like year or two, I'll tell you that. And, uh, but that was hard for me to look at like two, a year and a half ago because I was like, oh, I attract emotionally unavailable people that don't choose me. And then of course it was, they're the problem, not me. But what part of myself has normalized that energy and what part of myself isn't emotionally avail uh, available to attract somebody that's not emotionally available? That was the, that was the mind trick. So with what I'm sharing right now, understand that the reason the law of vibration is so much more powerful than the law of attraction is because you get down to the identity, you get down to your values, and you start choosing your own values. Like, think about this. Think about and imagine the ideal version of you that's living the life you want to live. That's what I did in 2017. We're living at my dad's house, working that nine-to-five job. I was walking to, I've told this story so many times. I know it's a broken record to some of you. Thank you for being very long-term <laughs> YouTube subscribers um, and supporters. However, one thing that happened is I was walking to the, the bathroom and I had this epiphany, this download that if I make a video every single day for a year, my life will completely transform. So I committed to that. And I noticed that the, and the reason that came is because I imagined the full-time version of me and I noticed that that version of me is making a video every single day, not just one a week. So then I said, well, what if I model that versions of me's thoughts, feelings, and actions? And I just decide that's who I am now. And that's exactly what I did. And within three to six months, my whole entire life transformed. It didn't take a year for me to go full-time. It took me like six months. If I would have known what I know now in the second month of going full-time, I would have been full-time because I could have just got like five coaching clients, you know, from like a thousand subscribers and I would have been able to go full-time. But I didn't know that. So I waited six months until I had 100,000 subs and then I went full time. That's why awareness can be so powerful. Now, one of the things you wanna become aware of when it comes to vibration as well, and this is something that has completely transformed my life. This is something you haven't heard me talk that much about, but it is so important. And that is the amazing power of something called breath work. Now here's why. People many times will focus on creating their dream reality. And they'll focus on the surface level and they'll focus on thinking, but they have all these blocked emotions inside of their body that are holding them back from actually energetically becoming that version of themselves. So for example, my whole entire life shifted over the last month because of breath work, because of opening up to new levels of even emotional availability, that actually led to me ending a relationship, a year and like six, a year and three month relationship. And it was because I was going through so much growth that it brought certain things to the surface that then like made me realize that I had to pivot out of my own integrity. But one of the things about this that I want to share is I it was so clear to me that because here's the thing with breath work. What happens is at certain times in our past, things happen and we store that energy inside of our body. And the energy we then carry around because we haven't allowed ourselves to express the emotion. We, we feel something, but we don't think we're allowed to feel it. We feel shame for feeling it. So then what we do is we hold inside our body. So what happens is if we don't express the emotion, we will then either repress or suppress that emotion. And where does it go? It stays inside of our own bodies. So, what happened for me is for the longest time, I was telling myself this story that I don't cry. I don't feel sadness. I would, I have like a buddy of mine and a couple friends of mine that cry. They're, they're masculine men who cry sometimes. And I'd be like, why are they crying? Well, why, why am I not crying? Does it mean I'm more masculine? <laughs> that wasn't the case. Is it, it was just more, I had more trapped energy around that. And I can look to my past and to see there were times where not to get too, like, you know, not to get too negative about this, but there were times in my past where I was experiencing 
some form of pain or some form of like physical, emotional, or mental abuse from my ex-stepmom from seven to 15 years old that was in my life. And what would happen is I might start crying and then I was told I was being a baby for crying. I was told to shut up and I would like, <gasps> you know, I would stop crying and I would just like hold that energy inside my body. And there was a certain time where I may have decided that it's just not safe for me. It was a vulnerability for me to show that emotion. If I showed that emotion, I'd get shamed. Well, what happened is, and here's the thing too, you don't actually always have to understand where that energy is coming from because what I'm about to share with you was, has been one of the biggest shifts in my own life. Um, I'd say in the last seven years, but probably my whole entire life, this is a huge shift for me. And because I realized that a lot of this energy isn't even mine. And this is why the law of vibration is way more powerful than just the law of attraction. Now, let me explain to you what happened. I go into breath work, and here's the reason I got certified in breath work, by the way. I run these 21 day challenges, and I normally bring in my friends to run the breath work. It's a specific type of breath work process. I bring in friends to, to facilitate the process, and hands down, out of the 21 days, the thing to get, we get the most testimonials for in the challenges are by day five or six. We always do breath work, and hands down, there are more transformations in breath work than anything else. And it just comes with breathing in specific patterns. There's music, there's breathing, and there's energy and emotion that comes up. And hands down, it's the most transformative thing I've ever seen. I've seen thousands of people. I've had 20,000 people go through my challenges, and I've seen people transform like crazy. So me, I'm like, well, I have a big enough YouTube audience that I can just have my friends come in. I don't have to learn breath work because I, you know, I, it's beneficial for my friends to come in to do it because they get in front of a whole bunch of customers and stuff. But I saw how powerful breath work is, and I said, you know what? I'm going to get certified in this breathwork process. So what I did is I go to this breathwork, and here's the thing, the breathwork is four days long, all day, pretty much like nine hour, eight or nine hours a day for four days straight. That's a lot of time for me to take off from making videos and everything else, my team and everything. But I decided that it was worth it because I've seen so many transformations. I do retreats, live events in Costa Rica and stuff, and it would just be beneficial if I learned. So I go to it. Now, on the first day, the cool thing was that I learned a lot about trauma, uh, a lot of being certified in this breathwork practice is understanding trauma, understanding this energy, how it gets trapped in the body. And uh, that was really cool. At the end of the first day, we receive, all the people that are being certified, there's 30 of us, we receive breathwork. And I've been, I've been through breathwork before, but I was like, okay. So I go into breathwork and I'm laying there. And we're breathing, you know, the music starts, we're breathing in specific patterns. And it's not even a specific pattern, it's very simple. But we're just bringing it, breathing in a lot of oxygen. And I've always got close to crying, but I've never actually really just let myself go. So this specific time was the first time in this four-day experience where I go in, I'm laying there, I start breathing in a specific pattern, which is actually very simple. And then what happens is about... Uh, 10, 15 minutes in, I start feeling this energy come up where I want to like quiver and cry. And I start quivering and I start, and then um, what happened actually is one of the practitioners came over to me and he said, I've shared this before and it sounds kind of cheesy, but basically what he said to me is he got down with me, he got down to where I was and I was laying on the, you know, the ground and he put his hand over my heart and he goes, he goes, it's okay to feel dog. He said, it's okay to feel dog. That's what he said. And when he said that, it just, oh, I just, I was allowing myself to feel. And I started feeling, I started releasing all this energy and I started quivering and I was releasing all this energy that was stored inside my body. And it was like wailing, crying, unlike anything I'd done before. At the same time though, there were no tears. And of course, then I believed there was something wrong with me. Oh man, there's something wrong with me. See, I can't cry. I can't cry tears, but I can cry and feel that quivering and that, that emotion, but not have tears. And then what happened is um, I was still happy it was a release though, and then I'm continuing to breathe in the pattern. There's four rounds of this breathing. You know, it's about an hour long, 45 minutes to an hour long. And then what happened is the second round of breathing, there was a woman that was sitting in front of me, standing, like laying in front of me. And she, I could tell, had been through some the, the way she was screaming. She started screaming. And when she was screaming, it gets really loud in these rooms. Some people are yelling, some people are crying, some people are laughing. It's just an expression of emotion, and there's a lot of different mixes of what's going on. And this woman that was laying in front of me started screaming. I could tell it was like sexual trauma scream. Like, no, like screaming. And in the moment she started screaming, immediately I could tell and I could connect to the energy of my mom. 
because of my mom's lineage, she's had so much crazy trauma. And I could feel my mom's energy. And that woman, woman screaming r reminded me and had me connect to my mom's energy. And as that happened, I could feel so much energy beginning to leave my body. And I started wailing, crying, like tears, so many tears going and pulling up in my ears and just like soaking my shirt. Like I've cried unlike any time I've ever cried in my life. And I believe I was releasing a lot of my mom's energy that was stored inside my body. You know, when we do this kind of work, you know, even like breath work, it's like we might not know always where the energy comes from. But a lot of times the energy is still there inside of our body. But when we release it, when we express the energy, it's no longer repressed. And then what happened is I felt so sensitive and new after that, which actually ended up helping because then what happened is as I was becoming more and more emotionally available in my relationship, something came up where it was like I leveled up and then there was information that came up where I'm not like, I'm not going to go too much into my personal life in this specific aspect, but basically um, it brought stuff to the surface and I then made the choice to like close down that container, but it was, it was a very good thing that it happened. I will say that. But here was the benefit also of that whole experience. Like I leveled up, I really believe energetically I leveled up to a new level, but also after the breakup, I was able to cry and release emotion in a way that like allowed me to move through it in a so much, so it's such a graceful way. After the breakup, because it was kind of a shock the way everything happened, but basically what happened is for like a week or two, I was just crying, releasing energy, and it allowed me to move through it in such a graceful way, but also it, it was funny because after that, you know, that breakup, it also, I was able to process the emotion from even a prior breakup where I never cried. So that energy, sometimes we don't know where the energy comes from, but like I was, I was able to process more energy and more emotion than I ever had. And I was able to really change my story and allow myself to feel sadness and allow myself to cry. And it felt good to cry. It felt good to release energy. Instead of storing it in my body, I'm able to release it. And guess what? That's going to go into me being a more emotionally vulnerable with women that I date. That's going to go into me being more present. That's going to go into so many areas of my life. Or maybe now even in this video, maybe you feel in this video, this is a very vulnerable video and you can feel that energy. It's a reflection of the energy of me releasing that stored energy that was inside my body. And one of the things I see so often is when people feel blocked, it's because they may think they know what they want, but their body hasn't forgotten the trauma and things that have happened in the past. The law of vibration is about becoming aware of those vibrations, that low vibrational energy, and releasing that low vibrational energy. And one of the most powerful ways to do that, I believe, is in breath work. And if you do want to check out breath work, by the way, if you join that of Magnetic Mastery, Magnetic Mastery is my monthly membership. We do breath work every month and a half to two months in there. And then also there's breath work for my, the Shift Experience live event that we did here in Austin recently. And you can, you know, join Magnetic Mastery um, and listen to that like tonight. And I, I really, I mean, I strongly believe it'll completely transform your life. And if you want to check that out, you go to www.magneticmastery.com or click the link in my bio. But in general, this is something I wanted to share just because it's so powerful, but it's not so often talked, to, talked about. Now, what are some of the internal ways to reprogram our minds to manifest? So internally, vibrationally, one of the things you really want to become aware of is what energy are you embodying in a 24-hour period? In a 24-hour period. Now, the reason I think my reality shifted so much back in 2000 and 17 was because I started making videos every single day. Every single day I made a video. And guess what? From every single day making a video within a 24 hour period, I'm tapping into that vibration and then doing that every single day, it begins to compound over time. It also, what you do daily affects your identity. So I have this chart that sometimes I share in my videos and it basically, it shows two ways of transforming your life. There's a stick figure of the old version of you and then imagine there's on the other side of the page is a stick figure of the new version of you. The old version of you, imagine there's a little box around you because of the familiar energy. Thinking, feeling, and acting equal to that same reality and we get stuck in our own definitions and we're stuck there, right? 
If we want to make a shift to that new version of ourselves, the key is becoming aware of this familiar pattern and making the choice to let it go and then having the courage to step into the unknown because this new version of you is in the unknown. And the more you step into the unknown, the more it becomes the known and the more familiar it becomes. So in a way, you're expanding your comfort zone. Now, there's two ways to transform your life that are so simple. And if you do it daily, it will completely transform your life. And in six months from now, you'll look back and you'll see that this is the video that changed everything for you. On one hand, it's meditation. Meditation is the ability to observe how you think, to observe how you feel. Meditation is the ability for you to... Um, as, as Joe Dispenza says, meditation literally means to become familiar with. If you want to become familiar with this new version of you, what you want to do is you want to become aware of the old version of you. And then you want to become familiar energetically by feeling the emotions of this new version of you. And you can literally, gratitude is the ability to feel grateful for something you don't already have. You can feel grateful for your dog, your mom, your, your cat, you feel grateful for your job, and you can also feel grateful for the relationship that hasn't come in yet. You can feel grateful for the job that you don't have yet by tapping into the feeling of gratitude and just feeling what that would feel like. And by feeling those emotions, you then begin to energetically tune to that reality. That is a way of energetically shifting your vibration. And the reason I recommend meditation too is because you can do it every single day. I meditate every single day. And by meditating, you evoke that energy. One of the things I do at night too is when I go to bed, I feel the emotions of me being the ideal version of me. I feel grateful for it now. I feel grateful that I'm traveling the world, doing live events. I feel grateful that I'm able to like meet people from everywhere and I'm able to like eat at amazing restaurants. I feel grateful for it and I imagine what that version of me would think, feel, and act and I imagine the values of that version of me. How does that version of me carry myself? And as I go to bed at night, I feel the energy of it and the reason being is when you go to bed at night, you're drifting from beta to alpha to theta state as you fall asleep and theta states your subconscious mind. So if you can impress upon your subconscious mind the feeling that you already are that version of you as you're going to bed, it's a very powerful way to hack your subconscious. And also you can do that in the morning. When you wake up and you become aware that you're waking up, imagine in that theta state, visualize that version of you, how you would think, how you feel, how you act. And don't get out of bed until you feel that that is who you are. Realize every moment's a new moment. That's who you choose to be. So meditation is a way of feeling the energies, of priming your body and energy for that reality now. Now the second step, so on one step, go into that other stick figure is meditation. On the bottom step is the more grounded perspective. That is what I call choice slash action. Choice slash action. You must step out of your comfort zone and be that version of you. What are you passionate about? I recommend you following your passion. What I did is I made videos every single day on YouTube because I knew that's what I was passionate about. So that was the action and I, doing that changed my sense of identity. Doing that changed my life. And that's what you can do every single day is begin to take action as this new you. And it can be something small at first. Like you don't have to create a new piece of art every day if you wanna be an artist. But you can, you can add a little bit to that painting every day. If you wanna be a writer, you don't have to write a book every day, but you can write a page every day. And as you do it, do it and realize this is who I am. I'm not doing this to get out of my current reality. I'm not, once I have this book completed, then I'm an author. Once I have this, you know, an art gallery studio, then I'm an artist. You're an artist now. You're an author now. I'm a, I was a YouTuber in 2017 when I chose that that's who I am. Your sense of who you are being, you get in life a direct reflection of who you are being. And if you want to really transform your life more than anything else, what you really want to do is you want to become aware of who are you being and use the power of meditation and action to step out of the known into the unknown and to do that every single day. Not because it's going to escape this current reality, but it's because it's who you choose to be. And if you do that every single day, I promise you, your life will transform more than you can even imagine. And you'll look back six months from now and you'll see that this was the video that changed it all for you. Right now, you can make that choice, by the way. You can make that choice that this podcast episode video, however you're, conce however you're absorbing this, this is what changed everything for you. Make that choice 
and watch how much your life begins to change. Commit every single day to that action of you being that version of you. Meditate, feel the emotions if it is ex as if it exists now, and then also take action as that version of you. Every single day, it compounds over time. Pivot if you need to. The fear of, the fear of failure, the fear of not being credible, the fear of what people think, that will all come up regardless. Lean into it. Let it be okay. The fear is trying to keep you the same. Don't let the fear win. The more you do it, the more you lean into fear and the more you expose yourself to fear, the less you will actually eventually feel the fear because you'll, extend, you'll expand your sense of identity from it. So doing that changes absolutely everything. Now, if you, by the way, if you want a meditation that will raise your dominant vibration permanently, it's one of my most powerful meditations, listen to this for 21 days right here. This meditation will change your dominant vibration permanently. Your vibration is a combination of how you think, feel, and act, and it has been on autopilot 